Oh well, sorry if you if you can't hear me typing, then you need to turn your volume up. Hopefully you will be able to hear me. Everything's working this end. Yeah, I don't have to talk all the time. Can can anybody hear what I'm saying here? If so, can you just shout up? Otherwise, I don't know whether it's working or not. Okay. Just one second. See above. Like I said, there's a BBO bug that forces the dealer to be different. West is meant to be the dealer here. That's how the hand was planned. But BBO now inserts a spurious invisible hand uh, at the top of the example hands, uh, which I can't even see. I can't do anything about and consequently it, skew it screws up it screws up all the things so just ignore the first three passes as I did say earlier
So here, the, the pass by east over seven hearts is promising first round control of hearts. If, and clearly it's, it's suggesting that we bid to seven, uh, to seven spades. Clearly east could just bid seven, but this gives a measure of, uh, it's almost like an invitation. So the pass is promising either the ace of hearts or a heart void and suggesting that we bid to seven spades. If East, the critical thing is, is, is if East doubles rather than bidding seven spades themselves or passing, if East doubles, it's denying first round control of hearts. That's the critical thing. That's why they're called control denying doubles. Okay, does everybody see how how this works now? So, if you imagine East having a singleton heart and perhaps King X of diamonds, now they would double over seven hearts and we'd quite happily play in seven hearts doubled rather than going one off in seven spades. But again, if, if West turns up with first round control of hearts in that situation, then they can still bid seven spades if they like. Anybody got any questions about control denying doubles? So they're, they're relatively easy. Um, it all hinges initially on what second in hand does over their sacrifice. Um, second in hand is the one who shows or denies the, the requisite level of control in their suit. And fourth in hand then confirms or bids on or just accepts the double if partners doubled and they don't have the control themselves. So you can play this if you're thinking of bidding one more to the sixth level or bidding one more to the seven level but if you're thinking of bidding one more to the sixth level then we're talking about first or second round control because it's assumed that we've we've covered everything else. The only issue is control of their suit. So if we're thinking of bidding one more at the sixth level, you can show or deny first or second round control. But if you're thinking of bidding at the seven level, as we are here, then it's only first round control that we're interested in. Second round control is not good enough. So any questions before we move on? We didn't.
Okay, so if if we've already established that we've got first round control of their suit, then there's no point as as uh, um, Ellie said. There's no point in using these because, as I said at the beginning, all of those guidelines must be met. So the only issue as to whether we bid one more or not is control of their suit. That's, that's the feature of control denying doubles. It's no good playing control denying doubles if you still aren't sure whether you want to bid, um, you know, if you're not sure whose hand it is, if you think actually you might be sacrificing and it's really their hand. Um, absolutely no point. Here, there's absolutely no question. West has opened and East has made a, a splinter, which is showing a huge hand and massive spade support. Um, we've had a flurry of Q bids interspersed with them pushing up in hearts. But the only thing we've not managed to Q bid here is the heart suit. Because it would take up too much bidding space to do it perhaps um, so the, the only really live issue needs to be whether we actually have sufficient control of their suit for the level we're thinking of bidding at ok yes yeah, so if East didn't have that ace of hearts um, Diana Right, but now, but now, Ken, the, the auction does change. I, I probably wouldn't splinter if I only had a 15 count. Um, I'd be bidding two clubs and then four spades, which is a, a mild slam try, and see if West wants to, to push on. Or I might even bid two clubs and then five spades. Um, or even six spades, but either way, I wouldn't necessarily be pushing towards seven. Um, you know, six clubs effectively is a is a grand slam force, and because it commits us to the six level anyway, therefore um, it must be looking at seven. West is initially declined that because they're only minimum um, and you know they don't have a great hand albeit they've got fairly nice shape so seven hearts you know six six clubs is is to some extent asking a question six, six spades is giving an answer when they sacrifice in seven hearts, there's effectively no captain of the hand. Um, and so it's all set for East to pass over seven hearts to say that they are potentially still interested in, in seven and do have first round control of the heart suit. Okay. Does that answer your question, Ken? Okay. Right, if there's no more questions on control denying doubles. Um, if need be, Ken, if you, if you arrived late, just have a look back through the notes when I put them up on the OCP website. Um, and I don't want to repeat them again because I've already done it once. Uh, I mean, I've already repeated it once. Um, what the guidelines are and exactly what the routine is for control denying doubles. So control denying doubles are when it's our hand and they're sacrificing. The next thing we're going to look at um, after a couple more examples is uh, non-penalty slam doubles, but a few examples first.
So this is the ham we've got displayed here.
Okay, does everybody see how this is working now? So here, um, it's a we freely bid up to to five clubs. Okay, we've not managed to exchange that much information, but clearly three spades is a um, is is probably a fairly reasonable hand. Otherwise, we'd probably be looking at three no trumps. Three spades is certainly looking probably for a slam here. Um, so over five spades, the double is simply saying, I don't have first or second round control of clubs. Because we're thinking of bidding at the six level, it's first or second round control that we're interested in. If South had a singleton spade, they would pass over five spades to show that they did have first or second round control of spades. And North would then possibly make a different decision. Okay, anybody got any questions? So that's two sides of the same coin with the uh, control denying doubles. But please don't forget that, that all of those four things really ought to be satisfied. Do you have a question, Joe? Yes, probably. Douglas, um, but I mean, don't forget that we've had three passes before the two-no trump. Um, although they were they were spurious, but um, I think I think with long weak clubs, uh, unless they're really weak. Um, yeah, I suppose, uh, but I, I mean, essentially, yes, you're right. South would, would probably f fake with the double to avoid North going another, another step higher. Even if they, maybe even if they had a singleton spade, they would do that if they really had nothing. Um... But uh, I think opposite a 2 no Trump opener, it's unlikely that East-West are going to commit themselves to the five level unless they had a weak hand, if they had strong hands. Um, they'd be, they would, by definition, have pretty much everything that the 2 no Trump opener didn't have and therefore would be would be more likely to be doubling five clubs um, rather than bidding five spades, which they almost certainly can't make. Yes, Joe, in answer to your question. Just bear with me a minute, guys. I'll just type something because Joe's not on the radio.
I, I mean, that's... I wouldn't say it's obvious, but... Um, so it does make a difference, you know, if they've sacrificed in a higher level suit at the five level or at the six level in a lower ranking suit, then we're talking about first or second round control. But if they've sacrificed at the six level in a higher le ranking suit than ours or at the seven level in a lower ranking suit, um, then only first round control is uh, sufficient. Clearly, if we're both missing first round control, there's no point trying to bid a grand slam. The, the reason I say it applies mainly at the sixth level is um, to do with, with working out the mathematics of how many defensive tricks you have. Non-penalty slam doubles is all about defensive tricks. So this is only second in hand over their last bid. So second in hand passes if they've got one or more defensive tricks. And they double if they don't have any defensive tricks. So this is all about counting up to two, essentially. So if second in hand passed to show that they'd got one or more defensive tricks, then fourth in hand passes if they also have one or more defensive tricks, because now we think we can get two tricks. So we don't think they can make their sixth level contract. And fourth in hand doubles if they don't have any defensive tricks. So if fourth in hand, if second in hand passes and fourth in hand doubles, now second in hand sacrifices if they've only got one defensive trick because the double says that partner doesn't have any. In other words, their six level contract is going to make. But if second in hand actually had two defensive tricks now they pass the double on the other hand if second in hand doubles to show no defensive tricks because the pass shows one or more. If second in hand doubled to show no defensive tricks, fourth in hand passes with two or more defensive tricks and sacrifices with no defensive tricks or only one defensive trick. It's, this is all about not getting a big penalty. It's about 
not sacrificing almost certainly not Ellie I'll come to defensive tricks in a minute um, assessing defensive tricks is, is uh, can be a little bit hit and miss um, you, you do need to be fairly sanguine about what does or doesn't count as a defensive trick I said I will come to that in a minute The whole point of non-penalty slam doubles is not to get a big penalty, as I've said there. It's to avoid us sacrificing when they're going off anyway. Bearing in mind that sometimes it, it can be quite difficult to actually to really establish reliably whose hand it is, i.e. who is actually bidding to make and who is sacrificing and you may right okay Sanya it's coming in a minute I've just said that it's coming just be patient <laughs> there is no standard definition of defensive tricks <laughs> all I can give you is guidelines so here it comes your patience has been rewarded I'm not saying that queens and jacks are unlikely to be a defensive trick. They might be, but you can't really count them. That's the point. It's too difficult to assess. And if there's lots of shape flying around, and in this kind of a situation, almost certainly there is a fair amount of shape flying around in both, in all four hands, potentially. Um, you know, there's a good chance that your queen jack XX might well get roughed out. Um, or ops just won't have to bother about them because they're going to be able to rough even if you never get the chance so queens and jacks in their suit you can potentially count if you think um, their top honours are probably split and so it's going to be difficult for them to uh, to catch your your honor like I said Queen Jack X is a reasonable bet and Jack 10 XX is also certainly Jack 10 9 X you'll be very unlucky if that's not a trick in their suit but I wouldn't start counting anything in your suit um, because there's a good chance that ops of We've got a void somewhere. A couple of examples. So your left hand opponent, open one spade, partner makes a weak junk over call of three clubs. Right hand opponent makes a forcing queue bid of four clubs. You bid five clubs just to muddy the water a bit. You've got rather a good hand for clubs. Left hand opponent bids five spades, partner passes, and your right hand opponent now bids six spades. So what do you do? Sorry, my connection's quite slow today.
Okay, so here, you, there's no way in a million years you're going to count the ace of clubs as a trick, because you've got too many. If partner's made a weak jump over calling clubs, it's a racing certainty that one of your opponents has got a void club. But the ace of diamonds is definitely a trick. So now you pass over their six spade bid to show one or more defensive tricks. Again, partner, if he's got, say, Queen Jack X in spades, now quite happily passes six spades. We don't need to take a big penalty. Even six spades minus one is going to be a good result for us. Because clearly we're not going to make um, even five clubs, probably. But if he had a really crap, a really crap hand... Um, with some scattered jacks like that second example now he would double to show no defensive tricks and because you've only got one defensive trick you would sacrifice in seven clubs because you can tell that six spades is probably making in other words given your hand the ace of diamonds is likely to be your only trick I said these are a bit more complicated than um, control denying doubles, but the principle is f fairly easy to, to grasp. So second in hand passes with one or more and doubles with no defensive tricks. Bear with me a second. So if second in hand passes, well, except they, Barry, they may not know what you're thinking. It, it, in this in this instance, no, I'm not saying I'm not saying that necessarily, Sanya. This isn't a suicide pact. If that was the case, you probably wouldn't even be competing at the five level, let alone thinking of bidding at the seven level, if you were red against green. Going back to Barry's point, um, yes, I mean, in this instance, it probably would tell them who had the ace of diamonds. Um, but I don't know that it's necessarily, it won't always be helping them that much. And knowing where the Ace of Diamonds may not actually help them at all. They just know they have to lose the Diamond Ace. But I mean, if, say, partner pops up with the Queen of Diamonds, that might help them. So, yeah, I, I mean, you're not committed to sacrifice... This is just helping in, in situations where you think you might want to sacrifice. And if you've bid up to the, the five level, the chances are that you are thinking about a sacrifice. Because five clubs was a sacrifice. Let alone anything else. So you wouldn't necessarily do it at red against green, Sanya, Okay.
the most difficult thing about non-penalty slam doubles is accurately um, assessing your defensive tricks. Um, you know, I've... No, what... The thing is, if it, you'll have noticed with control denying doubles that if they've sacrificed, they never escape not doubled. Because it's our hand. We need to, we need to, if we decide not to bid one more, playing control denying doubles, then uh, if they've sacrificed and we decide not to bid one more, then we always end up doubling them because we need to do that. But with non-penalty slam doubles, the idea is not to get a big penalty. It's to avoid needlessly sacrificing when we can take them off. If it's their hand and they've bid to six spades but actually they're going to go off, assuming that we can't make seven clubs, we don't need to double six spades. So it's okay six spades going one off not doubled because they've stretched too far. So even plus 50 is going to be a good result for us. Um, if it turns out that we do double, we do double it, then that's just a bonus. But that, that's not the idea behind non-penalty slam doubles. You know, the clue is in the name. That it's not with a view to getting a, a, a big penalty. If they've overstretched by one trick, you're not going to get a big penalty anyway. It's not going to be often that they've overstretched themselves by two tricks. Okay? For example, supposing your left-hand opponent opens one no trump. Partner passes, right-hand opponent bids two diamonds, and you're sat there with um, maybe the ace-king of diamonds. Here, you can be fairly sure that, especially if, you've, if you're short in heart, that actually... It's going to be, it's likely to be declarer who is um, the declarer because they're going to be ending up bidding hearts first over your double. But in a different sequence, it might well be that right hand opponent bids the hearts naturally and now. If anything, you're going to be on lead. So there's no need to double. There's no need to tip ops off to what's happening in the diamond suit or some other suit. Um, so is there a point? You need to ask yourself this. Instead, like I said, sometimes it's difficult to tell, but sometimes it's fairly obvious. So you've got a, a nice lot of spades, ace, queen, ten, nine, x. And your right-hand opponent has bid one spade during the course of the bidding. And they've ended up in three no trumps, which you know is going to be played by your left-hand opponent. In other words, partner's going to be on lead. 
if if you uh, double the three no con trump contract, most almost anybody would play that as asking for a spade lead here, because there's no way that that partner would think of leading a spade if you don't double. But certainly it's going to give you a tempo at the very least, even if it turns out that they've got jack to five and declare has got king x. That spade lead through dummy um, can hardly hurt you, especially if you've got an entry somewhere else. You see now you you've okay you've probably got one trick in spades you're certainly um, not going to lose all five spades if if your right hand opponents bid one spade but you don't know that a spade lead is necessarily going to help you um, it might well be that ops have got everything else you'll get your one trick but then they'll make three or four tricks in the suit. So lead directing doubles at a low level is more likely to be taken as a wish to compete in that suit if, if you're doubling an artificial bid by them. Um, so if you, unless you have a specific agreement about doubles of artificial bids being solely lead directing rather than a wish to compete, then that's fine. Um, but if it's say you know red against green you don't necessarily want partner to go off the deep end bidding the suit if they've got a decent holding themselves you might run into a huge penalty um, when actually all you were doing was trying to make a lead directing bid so again this is the sort of area where you need to have discussions um, at a high level it's much more likely to be taken as lead directing So do you double here for a diamond lead or not? Do, 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 do.
Come on, guys, don't be shy. Too much information. No, no, they can still hear. They're listening. We're back to earth. Come on, guys, don't uh, be slow to sit, please. Just sit. Don't worry about anybody else. Come on, guys, sit on your asses. <laughs> Get ready. Come on. Any of my pals there? Mm, some. Esther's there. Douglas. Barry. Madge. Nah. Do I know Esther? Yeah. Hi, Esther. <laughs> Where's Roger and... Not there. Not there this week. And John? No, he's not there this week. Esther's side said hi. Did she? Yes. Hi, Esther. <laughs> so it looks to me here that uh, East West might be playing Precision, and North South are probably going to be playing two over one or Standard American. Oh, damn. Sorry, guys. Can we stop this? Um, sorry about this. We need to have three passes because it's East. Yes, I'm sorry. They are. Um, East is the dealer here. Sorry, I wasn't quick enough. No, it's fine, Madge. You, you sit where you are. It doesn't matter what you're playing here as long as you ag agree with partner what you're playing. Uh, but could we have three passes initially, which we're then going to ignore, because East is the dealer on this hand. Okay, so please ignore those passes, they just didn't happen. East was the dealer. Thank you, Sanya. I shall pass that on. No, it might be my slow connection, actually, Sanya. Um, could well be. I do seem to have a fairly slow connection here. So, just, just pause a minute, guys. Um, Barry, before you bid, what is this double of... Five clubs by East. <laughs> it 
Is it any of the doubles that we've been discussing tonight? Well, the point is, it can't be a control denying double. It can't be a control denying double because um, we're only at the five level. We're only thinking of bidding at the five level. So control denying doubles only apply if we're thinking of bidding at at least the six level. The question is, does Esther think it's their hand or is it East West's hand? If she actually thinks it's North South's hand here, bearing in mind that the, the three passes initially never happened, if she thinks that, that it's North South's hand, now it might be. Um, a non-penalty slam double, but we're only at the five levels, so the maths doesn't really work. The maths only really works at the six level. So really, this double actually isn't anything, it's just a penalty double. Okay, carry on. question is, whose hand is it? Well, let's find out, Madge. You lead, and we'll allow East West to claim their 12 tricks, or 11 tricks. It's actually just going to be 11. So this was well judged by uh, East West as it happens. And not so well judged by North South because they've got a very, five spades is making and they've got a very cheap sacrifice of six clubs. The interesting point would have come if South bids six clubs, now we've got now we've got potentially um, control denying doubles coming in from east west to decide whether or not to bid six which on a 2-1 spade split would make, but unfortunately doesn't. And then oh, if East-West bids six spades, now North-South have an issue with uh, non-penalty slam doubles, an opportunity to use them, because the Ace of Diamonds is a prob probable uh, defensive trick and South should reckon the Queen Jack X of Spades is a probable defensive trick. Nothing in clubs, um, but North South should be able to work out that they actually have two defensive tricks between them, and therefore they don't bid seven clubs over six spades. It doesn't matter, they don't have to double it, because six spades going one off is a good result for North South. Any plus score is a good result for North South.
So I think it's clear from from the bidding that probably Esther felt it was North South's hand, and actually it was the other way around. So five spades was well judged by uh, Barry. Well done. If there are no questions, we'll try the next one. Well, it's not it's not that. I mean, you know, you you guys have been in the hand, you have to decide. Douglas, all I was saying was that the plan was that South would sacrifice in six clubs. And now we actually have control denying doubles from east west to arrive in six spades, which is a reasonable contract. It just happens to be unlucky because of the three nil spade split. And the issue is north-south then using non-penalty slam doubles to decide not to bid seven clubs but to defend six spades. Um, that was the idea of the hand. Um, but I can't predict what you guys are going to bid. <laughs> you know, in fact, east-west got definitely the best result on the hand, which is five spades making or four spades making. Um, if north-south push the six clubs they give east-west a bit of a problem um, as to whether to compete or not uh, but even six clubs is a good result against four spades making or five spades making So you all needed to just push a bit more. One spade. Three clubs. Four clubs. Um, we don't play it. You know, if if you play exclusion Blackwood, Douglas, then quite possibly yes. Um, but I don't, because I never play RKCB of any sort. So for East West, probably not. Okay, so North South have arrived in six spades. No, they haven't. Ooh. clubs are these? Okay, um...
question is here what Mad should do, what South should do over seven clubs. If you think we're in a situation where uh, control denying doubles apply, I'm not sure that they do. But over seven clubs, I think Mad should be doubling to show that they haven't got first round control of clubs but the other thing to bear in mind is actually have we established control of everything else and the answer is no we haven't so this, is, this has been a very scrappy auction where most of the bids have been clubs Yes, almost certainly. But the point is you haven't established whether you've got control of diamonds. There's been no mention of diamonds in the entire sequence. So really, the control denying double side of things doesn't really apply here because you're just, you're just punting. All of these bids mostly are just, you're just bidding on adrenaline and testosterone. Um, you actually haven't established... Uh, control of the side suits for example North could have bid six hearts over five spades which would have denied having the ace of diamonds and promised the ace of hearts because as you've rightly pointed out four clubs is probably showing control of clubs well I I think if you bid four clubs and then six hearts I think it's fairly clear that you have got first round control of clubs and you've also got control of hearts but you haven't got control of diamonds and now it's crystal clear to south that actually six is the absolute limit of the hand. So over seven clubs, they would double. Just naturally. Um, if only just to stop you from bidding seven spades. But not necessarily as a control denying double. Because I don't think you've really reach the point where you can use those because the control of clubs has been established pretty much by your four club bid but control of all the other suits hasn't you've shown you know if you've bid four hearts sorry six hearts you've established control of hearts but n denied it of diamonds so now the double is a, a totally different kind of double saying don't bid seven spades because we've got a hole somewhere and almost certainly it's in diamonds. Okay. Still, well done. Uh, like I said, it's very difficult to predict um, how these auctions are going to go because you all have your own ideas. Could we have a south, please, before I deal the next hand? Thank you very much, Madge. No, oh, she's gone. That's a shame. Another South, please. Anybody? Mehmet? Clement? Oh, Mr. Berg. Welcome. There'll be some ammunition for the forum here, Ken, I think. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Uh, hang on, let me just double check. No, sorry, can we have three passes, please? Um, West is the dealer here. Just three passes and then ignore them. I need West to the, be the dealer for this uh, secret. No, can I have uh, three passes, please, Esther?
and a pass from South, please, Ken. And then now, please, just ignore those passes. They never happened. West is the dealer here. Sorry, there's this uh, spurious hand that BBO is inserting that mucks up all the dealers and vulnerabilities. Um, nothing I can do about the vulnerability. Uh, I think actually east-west are vulnerable and north-south aren't. Oh, sorry to hear that, Madge. Don't forget, I've, I've established west, east, west are vulnerable here, north, south are not vulnerable. Come on, Ken. <laughs> okay, so what kind of a situation are we in here? Who is sacrificing and who is bidding to make here? I think east-west would probably think it's their hand and that north-south are, are sacrificing. Right, I can't actually tell how the bidding has ended up going here because of this other BBO bug um, where my uh, B 
bidding grid gets completely mucked up. I've got about 15 rounds of bidding here. Did we get a lead? I'm 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 absolutely certain that you make Okay. Um, we'd actually have to bid it again for me to make a sensible comment here because I have no idea who bid what towards the end. Um, I was hoping that, that South would come in with their hearts a little bit earlier, but I can understand why they decided not to because the vulnerability has been screwed up. It's actually north-south not vulnerable and east-west vulnerable. So even over three diamonds and not having... Yeah, I mean, that's, it's, there's a, a bug in BBO, Ken. They're, they're now inserting a spurious hand which nobody can see, certainly I can't see, um, above all of these hands, which screws up the dealer and it screws up the vulnerability. Um, which is why we're having all these passes to start with, to get the dealer in the right place at least. But, uh, so this actually looked a bit more, I think that double over six hearts um, can't be a control denying double because East West have got have both got second round control of hearts no it doesn't work because that 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 throws out all of the vulnerability anyway um, and I need to be able to predict how that's going to work um I might try that next week, but it's hardly worth it because next week's really on play rather than bidding. Yeah, it might do. I said I'll, 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 I'll give it a try, but I'm hoping that BBO will actually just fix the bug. I can't believe it's difficult. Um, okay, another one. So I think six hearts doubled is making here because uh, north-south can establish the diamonds, especially, especially on a diamond lead. I think uh, the diamonds are getting established fairly easily and uh, the club losers going away and half the spade losers are going away. So probably making an over trick. This, this goes to show how difficult it is sometimes to assess defensive tricks and uh, whose hand it is. You know, north-south here have got a paltry 15 points between them. Well, the thing is, is that the first diamond can be roughed high and then just cross back to the queen of the queen of hearts you can even afford to draw one round of trumps first um, especially on the lead of the king of diamonds um, so, like I said, very, very difficult to assess uh, defensive tricks. East may well think they've got at least one, if not two, and actually they end up having none, unless they need a club to start with. Um, right, just bear with me a second. 
Right, North is the dealer here. And so can we have three passes and then an opening bid from North? And we'll take it from there. Esso. So vulnerability here is north-south vulnerable, east-west not vulnerable. Ignore what it says. North-south are vulnerable and east-west are not vulnerable. So an unusual 2 no Trump from East. <laughs> okay, so now we are in control-denying territory. So that's what Ken's double means. North is looking for seven spades. Esther pushes on. Now we're still in control denying territory. But I think given the double of six diamonds, six hearts clearly shows that they do have at least second round control of diamonds and probably first round control, I would suggest. Because six hearts is clearly looking for a grand slam. No, I think you just have to think. Uh, I think you just have to think on your feet in this situation. The double of six diamonds is denying, denying first or second round control of, of um, diamonds. Six hearts is clearly a grand slam force. Um, ish, it's looking for seven um, because you're committed to six spades anyway. If if North just bid six spades, then that would just be to play. So six hearts. Well, I think I think six hearts is definitely promising first round control of diamonds because it's looking for a grand slam, because the double of six diamonds denies having um, first or second round control of diamonds. Otherwise, they would have passed.
We'll see. Let's have a lead, please. Barry's found a way to bid eight diamonds. <laughs> oh. Back to Esther. Well, actually, it doesn't matter whether Esther leads a club or not. This is this is another situation where. Um, I mean, clearly, West knows that they can't make seven no trumps. If if West didn't have the ace of diamonds, I would be wary of making this light in a double. Um, because you might just push ops to seven no trumps making when seven clubs is going off. Sorry, seven spades is inevitably going off. Um, because they've they've got to lose a club trick. And uh, as Barry just found out, Esther didn't get the idea behind the double anyway. because she didn't lead a club. But give us uh, different clubs and uh, the club lead might have been essential. Anybody got any questions or comments here? Might just get two more hands in. Mm, no, not really. D the diamond is the obvious lead. Um, I'm not sure I would have bid seven, seven spades. You must be worried about clubs here, um, Ken. I certainly would be worried about clubs. Yeah, you, ass you assumed that, and, and Barry assumed that, and I assumed that, but clearly Esther didn't. Thing is, on the bidding, it's almost certain that North is short in um, diamonds. So they probably aren't voiding clubs. So the six club bid is almost certainly the ace. Now you now South must be worried about a club rough.
Right. Difficult. I mean, these are why people like Mextrath and, and Rodwell and Laurier and Versace get paid the big bucks because they tend to get these kinds of hands right most of the time. Not always. I saw uh, Laurier and Versace get one wrong today. Not at this level. But they get them right more often than not. So I'm not sure I would have bid seven spades over seven diamonds. I think I would, if need be, I would just have doubled seven diamonds again. Which is no longer really a control denying double because they've already denied it with uh, the double of six diamonds. So the double of seven diamonds would just be saying, I really don't fancy seven spades here. Let's just uh, let them go off in seven diamonds doubled. Any more questions or points? That's right, um, Cheryl. Clearly the message didn't get through to Esther. <laughs> yes. Yes, that would be enough. Because clearly partner can't have more than three. Yes, that's right. Okay, on to the next. Uh, I think, just hang on a second. Uh, no, we can have South as South South as the dealer here, please. So just play the hand as is. Are you playing modified guest him, Barry? That's my boy. So three clubs showing the, the extreme unbid suits. So spades and clubs. The vulnerability is as shown, by the way.
Ho ho! Now we'll get some action. I feel sure. So we're still not at the level for any of these special doubles. But I think we will be in a minute. Okay, so the double of six diamonds is suggesting, I think, no defensive tricks. That's how it should be. Because given West's pass over four hearts, it's quite clear that West is weak rather than strong. Everybody, I have to announce that I love my wife at her insistence, or rather I had her permission to tell you that. <laughs> no, probably not. I don't have to. So what do we end up in here? Nobody said a word. They're all absolutely gobsmacked. I oh know Charlene was listening. I haven't got any bacon. Sorry. It's eggs, beans and cheese she wants now. Okay, so here east west sacrificed in six spades. The pass of six spades promises first round control of hearts of spades rather. So the pass over six spades is suggesting a seven level contract in No, hang on. Douglas, it's north south's hand here. That's absolutely clear. So that the pass of six spades suggests seven to make. It, I mean, it, it doesn't suggest seven. It suggests seven by promising first round control of spades.
Okay. So. So I think this is probably pass or correct. Um, I think John is back. I'm not sure. If not, I think maybe Maisie or Jen is going to cover it. I will try and be there, but I can't guarantee it. Tomorrow you're busy. I'm told that I'm going to be busy tomorrow. So I may not be there tomorrow. Okay, so I think Seven is making... Seven of either red suit is making here. A heart would indeed set in diamonds. Yes. That's, that's sometimes the danger. Uh, especially when East has as many spades as they do and partners shown a weak hand. East can actually tell here that, that North-South are playing with a 30-point deck. Um, because clearly West's pass over four hearts means that they've got a weak hand, not strong, so they're five to nine rather than 16 plus and it looks like east west have got all the spades which means that north south almost have to have everything else well i think i mean i think maybe Maybe, uh, Douglas, I would have bid three hearts over three clubs. I th I'm not sure I agree with the pass over three clubs, but, I, I mean, that's your style. It does, indeed, Ken, but um, I think clearly guess them if you've got it available is a better way of showing the West Hand. But you're right, it does help you. Even if you turn out to be wrong about the location of the King of Clubs, but you don't need it. Because the losing club's going away on the fifth diamond. So, six, seven hearts by south is unassailable. Um... Six diamonds can by north can be beaten. Um, but there you go. Right, guys, I'm going to call a halt there if you don't mind. Uh, I need to go and cook my wife some dinner. Right, ignore. Sorry, ignore the uh, the march side of that. Um, next week is the last week of the sort of official series for OCP. Um, I'm going to take a short break for a couple of weeks after that uh, and then spend a couple of months probably covering the complex system. Uh, but those will probably be on in midweek seminars about the same time but on a Thursday uh, and then we'll start up OC, the OCP Super Precision series again in the autumn um, so next week's the last the last week of the proper series hope to see you then it'll be on 
Uh, just looking at defensive carding text and some Uh, maybe Douglas, but I, you know, there's not much point coming to those if you aren't reasonably comfortable with the simple system, um, which is why I tend not to do it on a Saturday night, which is my regular teaching time. So, for the people who aren't into OCP, um, there'll be a few months break, and then we'll start the the simple OCP system for anybody who wants to learn super precision in the autumn. Um, if you want to come along to the complex system, feel free, but I think uh, if you're not into the simple system, you'll find it quite confusing.